So on to our next speaker. Um, Sharif is BDO's Head of the Global Natural Resources, um, responsible for strategy and development of the sector within BDO internationally. Um, his valuation experience covers small, medium-sized and large businesses in both the private and public sector and extends across a wide range of industries with a focus on the mining sector. Sharif has led BDO teams for several merger, through several mergers and acquisitions and has prepared numerous independent expert reports and other special investigation assignments and having prepared over 400 public independent expert and investigating accounts reports, which we've all um, deeply valued, of course. Sharif is recognised as a leader in his field in Australia and he is a fellow of the, both the Chartered Accountants Australia and New Zealand and the Institute of Chartered Accounts in England and Wales. And I'm really looking forward to your presentation today, Sharif. And I really hope I've said your name correctly. So. Oh, yeah. You did a great job, Leanne. Great job. Most people can't say it, so you did very, you did very well. Unfortunately, I'm not talking too much about mergers and acquisitions today, but I could do a separate hour on that easily. Today, I'm going to talk about something that's similar to diamonds, just as exciting, I'm sure you're interested in, which is cash. Cash is the lifeblood of, of exploration companies, and it's something that uh, we kind of talk about a bit, but what, we, what we've done at BDO is we've been, for many years, done a lot of analysis around, um, around cash and how much cash exploration companies have got and what they do with the cash. Now, just a bit of background, every exploration company is listed on the ASX lodges in Appendix 5B. And that 5B is a standard form that fills in lots of uh, details. So you get end up, what you get end up with is lots of data. And data's great, but it's only great if you actually make something of it, understand what it actually tells you. Now, we've been doing this for several years, and. Uh, the last, the, the numbers I'm going to talk about are up to June. Unfortunately, given the last couple of weeks, I had the September data ready. But so I'll, I'll make a few suppositions and expectations of what's going to happen in September. And if what I say doesn't come to fruition, well, you'll have forgotten this presentation by then anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. So we're talking mainly about about the, the June numbers here. There we go. So first thing is an easy one to look at. We, we started doing this quite. Brilliant, brilliant timing just after the mining construction boom. So just as things started to get a bit bad. So, so in 2013, and one of the easiest things to look at is the number of 5Bs that are lodged. And what you've seen is a steady decline of 5Bs being lodged from 2013 right to June 20. It's, it, there was a steady decline going for the first three years, principally as companies were basically fleeing from being exploration companies and turning to something else, mainly, mainly backdoor listings for tech and biotech. And you see a steady stream down to about December 2016 when it started to plateau. And ASX made it hard, made it hard to, to do backdoor listings. And it was a nice plateau. And we thought things were going to get better. And they, they basically didn't. For a couple of years, they got, bet, they got static. And they've gone down since. So we've gone from about 860 listed explorers seven years ago to 646, which is a, a, a big drop. A big drop for June 20. Now, is that going to stay that way? Is that trend going to continue? Well, this is my first prediction. It, it certainly isn't. It certainly isn't. We're seeing at the moment a plethora. A plethora is a good word. Maybe it's an overstatement. But quite a large number of IPOs happening. And I think that the, the, the September quarter will show an increase. And that the December quarter itself after that will show even, even more. There we go. Now, I've referenced a very reputable journal here called Australia's Payday, you may have heard of. But in the most recent, uh, most recent edition, there's a section talking IPOs flying now, and it lists uh, eight IPOs on there for the, for the month, which, which is just shows you um, we're going to see numbers coming back in the exploration space alone. Luckily, four of them I worked on, so it's quite nice. I can talk a bit about that. But so the first thing talking about, about IPOs and listed explorers is why. Why is this happening? Well, the first one is investor's appetite. Basically, if you've, got, if you've got a lot of money, as a lot of superannuation funds, pension funds, endowment funds, institutional investors do have, it's not much return putting it in the bank, putting it into bonds, much to stick it under your mattress. There's, there's not a lot of return there. Equities are the place to go. So why exploration? Why mining companies? Well, there's three areas, I think, that, that, that they're going to be, um, that are in demand and we are seeing. One is gold, and that's a pretty obvious one. In terms of volatility, gold is uh, strong, and it's going to be probably for the foreseeable future. Infrastructure, we're seeing government policy being to, to um, spend a lot of money on infrastructure to try and revitalize the economy. And if you're going to build things, the stuff you're going to build things with quite, quite cleanly has to be dug out of the ground. And so you've got all the, all the commodities to go to that, such as iron ore and everything that goes with it. And the last one is future-facing metals. So Tim, people, I don't really like that much, but you call it battery minerals. Anything that's new, new economy stuff, 
your coppers, nickels, all those sort of things, which was growing anyway. But with COVID, I think it's just uh, increased that, that too. So we're going to see more. And the other th feature about IPOs, which is quite relevant into what I'm talking about, is the, qu is the quantum of those IPOs. In the past, it might have been a $5 million raise. What was a $5 million raise will now be a $10 million raise, and it could close for 12 or 15 if you wanted to. So the numbers we're seeing are quite, are quite big. Um, and and we're, so we're going to see companies with more cash than they might previously have had. There you go. So let's talk a bit about the actual data we, we see. This is back to June, as I said. So what the graph on the left shows, with the, the, red, the red bars in particular, show those explorers that had more than a million dollars in the bank. And you see from, December, from September 18 to December 18 it, it coming down as a percentage and coming down. But then in the last quarter of June, it going up. So more, what that means is that 62% of explorers had more than a million dollars in the bank. Now, this isn't just African ones. This is, just, this is all explorers. I've got a bit of analysis on Africa a bit later. Um, and what we're seeing is that the percentage of those with less than a million dollars in the bank, which is the blue bar chart, coming down. So that's, that's relatively healthy. And then the, the graph on the right is a little bit busy, but the dotted lines basically are showing that on average, there are less com fewer companies with less money if that makes sense. So explorers are, get, are getting cashed up. It's, it's probably the way to look at that particular graph, it's, although it's a bit busy. Okay. Now, in terms of where the money's going to, there's lots of different ways you can, you can slice and dice this. The, the graph on the left shows investing, investing, ex investing expenditure. That's when you're buying projects, you're, 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 you're investing. And that's been going down. So what we're seeing is, is companies getting, having more money but not able to invest the money. And in parallel, the one, the one on the right talks about exploration expenditure. Now, what we have been seeing is we've seen a plateau of about, this is, a, this is total exploration expenditure of all, exploration, all, all explorers. And you'll see in the, the right-hand one I find quite interesting is that September, October, September 19, for three quarters thereafter, pretty much static the amount of expenditure on exploration, and then it really falling in the June quarter. Now, my, my hypothesis, and I, people can argue with me, great, is it just, it's, it's been hard. That particular quarter was, was when COVID hit, and it was harder to spend the money. It was harder in terms of mobilization, harder in terms of access to, to site, and I think that the, the, you can see why that drop was. Notwithstanding, in that particular quarter, companies had more money. They just weren't able to spend it. And I suspect when we look at the September quarter, we'll see a similar, a similar feature in the exploration spend and investing spend will be lower because of the restrictions, the inability to spend, and we'll probably see companies with more cash than they had, which, which, which is healthy for the future, longer, medium, longer term future. In terms of financing, what we saw in the March, we saw um, an increase, increasing over, the, over several quarters until COVID hit. And in that March quarter, we saw a plummet, big reduction in the amount of cash that explorers were raising. So you see that the March 20 quarter, a big drop, and then June 20, it coming back up again. I fully expect in the September quarter, it going back up again and probably exceeding what it was back in June 18. Got feel, and December probably the same as well. So I think for the foreseeable future, we're starting to see more and more. One of the things that we, we do track every, every month, because there's every quarter, sorry, because there are quite a lot of explorers, we focus on those that, have, those that have raised more than $10 million, and we call them the fund finders. Bit of alliteration that works quite nicely. Mm -hmm. So the fund finders for the, the June 20 quarter um, was that red bar graph on the right. And that shows, not surprisingly, of those companies that raised more than $10 million, the bulk of it was in gold. And, and that probably doesn't surprise anyone. What was interesting is that it, 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 over, the, over the period we've been running this, generally second place has been oil and gas. Now, for many reasons, as you're probably aware of it, oil, oil prices are great, um, and so oil and gas dropped down to third for the first time in, in a long time, and salt of potash came up uh, as being the second highest. Oh, admittedly, only two, two or three raised a bit of money, but, but gold is still the number one, and there's a fair spread thereafter. But the big feature there is oil and gas fell away from its normal second spot and, and fell away quite a lot. It's normally not too far behind gold. And I suspect we're going to see that as well in the next uh, quarter or two, that oil and gas is going to be, um, going to be behind. That's right. I'll get this. 
There we go. There we go. So the fund finders, so running this over many years, we haven't really focused on Africa per se. So I've pulled out some Africa-specific numbers to see what that told me. Um, and for the fund finders, which are those companies that raised 10 million or more, we focused on, for the last few financial years, how much was raised for African companies. So the graph on the left is, is the number of companies, and the one on the right is the, is the, the quantum. So what, the, what that shows is that certainly the, the 2020 financial year was, was a good year, and, the, quite a, and there was uh, 19 companies raised at least $10 million in Africa, in, 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 who lodged five Bs, and was $700 million raised, which was the highest for several years, as you can see, and that 2019 was, was poor. So just bear in mind that the, that's, that's a good trend, and that 2019, 20, so 2020 was only 19 companies. Well, just in the last quarter, just, uh, just in the September quarter, you've got, you've got seven companies listed that have raised over $10 million just in that one quarter. So we can see that this year is going to be, the first quarter of 21 financial year, I suspect, is going to be a very high one for us. And that will continue. So I think we're going to see a record year in 2021 for raising money for African companies. Now, some of those just crept over the line to sneak over the 10 million, but it all counts. It all counts as 10 million. And obviously, my color coding here should tell you that most of it's in gold. Um, and that's not a real surprise to anyone. Now, the last couple of slides um, are, are just specifically on, on African companies. This one looks at, for the last quarter, the June 20 quarter, how African companies on that, who, who, who lodged five Bs compared to average, average companies. So the first one talk looks at the average cash at the end of 2020 for African companies um, compared to all of them. So what's that saying is African companies generally have more cash on average. Statistics can tell a lot of different things, but on average have more cash. But the next one shows they raise less cash. They raise less cash on average than other companies. What does that tell you? I actually don't know, but it, 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 it's, it's interesting. Um, but they did spend more. They did spend more. So on average, they spent $700,000 in expiration compared to $600,000 on average. And they invested more, 500000 compared to 200000 So what, one thing that might tell you is that African companies, whilst they might have, they have more cash or raise less, but they're actually spending more money in the ground, spending more money on their assets than, than average. So there might be some non-African companies that probably need to need to be looked at a bit of what they're doing with all their money, perhaps one way of looking at it. Now, just comparing, this is my last slide, just comparing the, the last two quarters, the March quarter and the June quarter, and seeing what the trend is for African companies alone. And whilst I said that African companies had, had spent more money than, than on average, they actually had, had reduced in the June quarter. So the cash they had, in total, this is in total rather than average, was 617 million, as a put down from seven, 662 the quarter before. So they've been using the cash. Uh, the, ca the financing inflows had come down, albeit in the March quarter there was one very large one, which kind of skewed the numbers a little bit with far limited uh, big raising. So that's the reason why they'd raised less, perhaps. And they'd, uh, they'd spent less. So that 67 million that was spent by African explorers was down from 98 million. And I think African explorers may have suffered more from the inability to get to site and mobilization and access to drills, et cetera, than, than others perhaps had. So I haven't done the maths for the March quarter, but I suspect the gap between African explorers spending more money than, than average would probably would be even more in March than it was in June. So African explorers are performing you know, really quite well. And the net investing cash flows had come down as well. So I suspect we might see similar in the September quarter, we're going to see African exploration companies having more money, the ability to raise more money, but perhaps not spending it quite yet. So plenty of to talk about in cash, and I think that we'll be issuing the, uh, the September quarter stats and our report in the next couple of weeks, and just watch out for it. Hopefully all things I've said here will, will come to fruition. If they don't, you can text me, email me, tweet, and say, Shreef, that's rubbish, you lied. Thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks so much. That was really insightful. Um, I'd be keen to see the, um, you know, what, what happens in the next quarter. I think you're right. I think, uh, you know, we've got Brian right here from Capital Drilling. It'll be interesting to hear his view on, you know, what, what's happening with exploration in, in Africa. I think the logistics are, are quite difficult.